What's going on engineers? In this next episode in the Let's Learn Rust series, we're gonna start looking at control flow in Rust. This is things like if statements and while loops, infinite loops, pattern matching, among other things. There are some differences in how Rust does control flow, but you're gonna find that a lot of the things are going to be similar to stuff in other languages that you might be already used to. So let's jump in. One note before we begin, in previous episodes of the Let's Learn Rust series, somebody mentioned that the compiler noise for the warning is makes things a little confusing for people to understand what's going on. So for all episodes for this one forward, we're going to use this allow dead code and unused variables. That way there will be no warning in the editor and no warning in the actual terminal when we go to run the program. But if there is a warning, I will make sure I state it explicitly. So first thing we look at is the if statement. And before you use the if statement, we'll probably need a variable. So we'll pick something like let age equals 25. We'll create a variable just called age with the value of 25. And we'll use that for some of the other control flow stuff. A simple if statement is pretty much like every other language with one difference. It doesn't have the surrounding parentheses. Now, should you add the parentheses, the program will compile. However, Rust does see this as a warning and it will let you know that when you compile it. For the else if, it's gonna be just like other languages except without the parentheses again. In this case, we'll check under 21. It'll print something there. And then the last one, of course, is just the else. And then that's gonna be just like every other language as well. Now, one enhancement with the if statement in Rust is that you're able to capture the result of an if statement into a variable. So imagine you want to check to see if an age is old enough. You can do like old enough equals, and then you can actually just do the normal if statement here. So if age is greater than 21, then you could just put true, else, false. Now what this will do is it'll either put true or false in the variable called old enough. Unfortunately in Rust, there is no ternary. So the closest thing you'll get to that is take a copy and paste version of this and then just compress all these down. That's gonna be the best you can get. Next one we'll get is the match statement. And we started looking at this in previous videos. This is gonna take the spot of what we would call the switch statement in other languages. So as in other languages, we can do match age and then that will start our block in here we can start writing all the patterns now in other languages the switch statement only matches specific values but in rust we can match a range of different patterns and values so we can start by doing specific values we could say like 21 fat arrow age is 21 you now we can do 22 fat arrow age is 22. the match statement supports or so we can do something like 23 pipe 24 which will mean the age is either 23 or 24. It also supports ranges. So imagine we wanna check if the age is between 25 and 28. The syntax is kind of weird, but we can do 25 dot dot equals 28. Fat arrow ages between 25 and 28. There's a way to use less than and greater than as a pattern. And the way we would do that is do n if n is less than say five, fat arrow, then we can say age is less than five. And n is just going to be a placeholder for the actual age. We could have picked X or J or I or A or whatever. And of course we want to do greater than, we could simply copy that. We could flip the sign, change it to say 50, put a zero there, then put greater than. And then remember it is a match statement, so we do have to be exhaustive. I mean, we have to select a case that happens for any age that is not matched by any of the other patterns. So age is, you know, something else. Next thing is gonna be loops. And the first one is going to be an infinite loop. Rust makes making infinite loops extremely easy. You simply do a loop and then put a statement block. What we'll do now is we'll just create an incrementer called let mute i equals zero. That way we have something to increment inside that loop. Rust does support the continue and break keywords, which functions exactly like any other language. So if I wanted to have it count up to 10, I could do if i equals 10 and then break from that. Otherwise plus equals one. Now we'll add one to the incrementer up to 10. One enhancement Rust does have on the loop keyword is that you can capture the output from a loop. So if you want to capture a variable from a loop, you could do something like let x equals loop, and then you can specify what you want to go into that variable in the break statement. So what we can do here is say break i, and what that'll do is basically return i into x. So now x has the value of 10. Rust supports while loops, which function exactly like any other while loop. So again, we'll create another Incrementer, we'll call it j, and that's gonna be while in the expression, we'll say j is less than 10. Statement block, j plus equals one. And once again, continue and break work in these. Rust does support for loops, but not in the same way as it does in other languages. Other languages use the standard pattern of for, and then initializer, condition, and step. So like for i equals zero, i less than 10, plus plus i. 
To write the same thing in Rust, it's going to be 4i in, and then we got to specify a range. We'll do 0 dot dot 10, which means 0 up to 10 exclusive. And then to do a step, we do dot step underscore by, and then specify a 1. And then that will loop over that entire range, but step by 1. So this should print 0 up to 9, and we can come over here and just run it and just make sure it does do that. And it does. Now it's important to note that the step by one and the parentheses are superfluous because it does step by one by default. So if we remove step by one and then we remove these parentheses, then this is going to be functionally equivalent to what I had before. And we can come over to our terminal and we can verify that. It looks good. Rust supports a second type of for loop, but this is for looping over things inside something like an array, array slice, or a vector. So in this case, loop over a vector. So we'll need a vector first. Let nums equals vec. To loop over each of these items, it's the exact same syntax as Python, it's for num and nums with a statement block. And then from here, you can print out each individual item or do whatever you need here. We can run our program again just to make sure it does what we expect. And it does. And that's really all there is to control flow in Rust. I, I personally really like the syntax. I think it's very clean and I think it's a real improvement over other languages. I think it's particularly impressive they can get this kind of concise syntax in a language that's both statically typed and ahead of time compiled. So definitely good on them for that. As always, if you have any questions or comments about the video, make sure you leave them below in the comments. Other than that, I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.